Hello everyone, this is Jacob from Board Games and Bourbon, and I wanted to talk to you today about five things you might find surprising about the fashion crafting game Rococo. This game is designed by Matthias Kramer, Louis Maltz, and Steven Maltz, and is published by Eagle Griffin Games. And the one that we're looking at today is the reprint, or deluxe edition, which includes all of the previous expansions, as well as upgraded components and new artwork. So let's jump in and get started. first thing that might surprise you is that it is a deck builder. Rococo combines a lot of ideas, including resource management to build outfits, majority control to score points, and most pressingly, deck building, which is imperative for easing resource constraints and opening up action possibilities. You'll start off with some basic cards, but to build towards the more robust turns, you'll need to spend actions gaining more cards with specific powers. That's because each card can only activate certain parts of the board, depending on its type, of which there are three. So to tap into the full array of possible board synergies, you'll need a variety of card options. Furthermore, each card has secondary actions that are your lifeline for pulling off clever combos, getting out of jams, and scoring just enough extra bonus points to win the game. If you like games like Concordia or Dominion, you're going to have a great time here. Top Notch artist Ian O'Toole has a history of working with Eagle Griffin Games on games such as Lisboa, Caban, and their deluxe version of Rococo. Not only is the artwork a refreshed and jubilant reimagining of what you've been playing, it's also factual. That's not a random king at the center, that's Louis XV. Take a look at the ceiling above his head and you'll see the angelic depiction recalling the Sistine Chapel. That illustration is an allusion to the ceiling in the Royal Palace of Versailles that was painted by Jean-Baptiste de Champagne and depicts Mercury on his chariot pulled by two roosters. Though the setting of the game is during the Rococo period, much of the artwork seen in the game, as well as the Palace of Versailles, are more Baroque in appearance, as Versailles was built during the reign of Louis XIV, while the Rococo style only came into prominence during the reign of Louis XV. It was actually a direct response to the more formal Baroque, including more ornamentality, asymmetry, and was modeled on nature more than its predecessor. As a quick aside, Versailles was built to escape the trouble in Paris, and Louis XVI went there to escape the smallpox epidemic that happened during his reign. It's most famous for its Hall of Mirrors, which was cutting-edge technology at the time. Less glamorous was the fact that, if you needed to go to the restroom, you did so in the corner of the room. The game includes several sturdy pre-painted resin pieces like lace, thread, and the impressive first player marker. But is that Marie Antoinette? Far from it. While Marie Antoinette presided over the decline of France and has often attributed the line, let them eat cake, the bust is actually that of Polish-born Maria Leszczynska, wife of Louis XV. As opposed to her successor, she is regarded as a gracious and greatly popular queen who brought many new customs to Versailles, and eventually became the longest ruling queen in French history, reigning for a total of 42 years. Another fascinating historical figure portrayed in the game is in its Madame du Barry solo mode. The titular Madame du Barry was a mistress to King Louis XV, but was unique in the fact that she was not of noble birth. She was the daughter of a seamstress and was educated in a convent, but left when she came of age. From there, her path took her through many jobs, including hairdresser, seamstress, and companion slash caretaker. But she eventually caught the attention of Jean-Baptiste Dubarry, at which point she became a courtesan, and through that line of work, met and eventually became the mistress of King Louis XV. 
The whole arrangement necessitated a falsified birth certificate and an arranged marriage in order to avoid the scandal of a common person becoming the king's mistress. Naming the solo mode after Madame du Barry is even more appropriate as her life in Versailles was a lonely one. She was often shunned by the nobility at court due to her lower class. In time, she gained more influence in the court after her formal presentation to the king, but did not concern herself much with politics and preferred the world of fashion, gallant, and jewelry. And that's the list. Hope you learned something you didn't know before. For more videos like this, be sure to subscribe and let us know if you enjoyed the video by liking and leaving a comment below on a game that you'd like us to explore. And of course, be safe, be well, and we'll see you next time.